So what is the nature of the informal sector in Ghana? The informal businesses are employing over 80 percent. A recent studies also point out that in fact the proportion has even gone up to 88 percent of the active working population. The SMEs are really the backbone of the economy of Ghana. I started as an informal operator with the chicken in, at the back of my house. After two years, I realized that the chicken business in, at the back of my house was giving me even more money than what I was getting from my employment. I therefore decided to look seriously at the chicken business. On and on and on from 100 chicks, I grew to about 200,000 chicken on the Afarewa farms. Samba Food started as a micro-initiative in my kitchen in 1993. Today, the company Samba Foods is a listed company on the Ghana Stock Exchange under the alternative, uh, the exchange arrangement. I started alone with my two children, you know, when we were helping in labeling. Then we went to about five uh, employees. Today, we are about 25 of us and, of course, about 15 casuals when there is a lot of work to be done. I had interest to go into the subject of informal businesses and the SMEs. When I was the president of the AGI, I conducted a research into the formalization of informal businesses. And in fact, I used that as part of my requirements for a doctorate degree. Then, following from that, I decided that the things that I have gathered in the research should be put into a book form so that we can get policymakers and everybody who is interested in the growth of the informal sector can have a good reference book that they can look at. I have organized this book into eight chapters. The first four chapters deal specifically with the informal sector in Ghana. The next two chapters deal with informal sectors in other African countries. And then the last chapter deals with uh, the recommendations on policies that we have to adopt if we want to grow our informal sector. What you realize in Ghana economy is that most businesses or the small medium enterprises become me too. When they see a friend into selling this, they also jump into selling it. There's no data research to support it. When you basically look at the book that's been written by Nana Usuafari, it really points to the things that need to be done to improve this sector, which I see that is a really knowledge base, fundamental to teach. So one may ask, what are the drawbacks to the growth of the informal businesses and small businesses? What we have researched and found out is that the government's recognition of the informal sector is a little bit on the lower side. The government is trying to do something, but it doesn't cover the whole spectrum of activities of the informal sector. They have a lot of challenges. If these challenges are addressed in policy by the government, we are hopeful that the informal businesses could gradually be formalized so that they can contribute meaningfully and positively to the development of the Ghana economy. We are, we are put a whole lot of suggestions which our policy makers we think should have a look at to be able to at least strategically pick some of them and develop as other countries are doing. Apart from this, we also realize that a lot of them face uh, capital challenges. They don't have money. So we are suggesting that they should form cooperatives and groups so that they can come together and then uh, raise monies. And this also is uh, stated in the book. The metropolitan assemblies, the district assemblies, 
should try to look at the spatial development of their various areas and allocate areas where we can develop and put this kiosk nicely. 2007, I'm back. I'm driving over village. I'm in Nimu. Accra, until me by Accra 2007, but D catch it say two three months. And then I'm going to send a hard driving in city here. And then I start driving. Okay, I start driving here and I'm in Saka Stevina. We told me where 2010 2011. Now we didn't know I'm going to go has been in the system for so long 34 years now. And to think that we started with only just one machine. One machine, to industrial machines, to a whole factory, manufacturing, production, sewing for customers, and also now training. I have operated as an informal businessman before I formalized. And a lot of Ghanaian businesses started as informal. But the majority that we are finding now they are all operating informally and they are not getting any incentives to really formalize and operate and become bigger. But what we are even seeing in some of the research findings is that some of the bigger formalized companies are not becoming informal because there are not enough incentives to keep them formalized. We've had a lot of recognition, including the state, you know, honor member of the Order of the Volta. And from just producing shito to, you know, actually be honored by the state is something very, very heartwarming. We've trained more than 500 uh, people. And the pleasure and the joy is seeing them also set up their own businesses. It's been very fulfilling. One of the questions that one may want to ask is what are the prescriptions that we have proposed in this book. And I will say that the first thing that we are trying to get policymakers to understand is that they should create the conditions for informal sector businesses to grow so that they can contribute to employment creation and poverty reduction. There is a need for institutional and legal framework to back informal businesses. Now they are operating anyhow. Whatever, wherever anybody finds himself, he operates. And like I said earlier on, the informal businesses spread across all sectors of the economy. You won't find them in only one sector. Everywhere, including services, there are informality in all these areas. Then there should therefore be a broad policy framework to guide them and guide everybody whose action is impacted by the informal businesses. One other important thing that we, we discover is that when policymakers or government are taking decisions, they don't involve these people in the decision making. One of the things also I have pointed out by in the next book is cooperation. And you know, we said in the tree that we are approaching from Ebu. When they come together to form associates or cooperatives to work together, whether they are farmers growing tomato or growing onions, if they come together, and of course, with that small association, then they can go look for some funds. These are the things that we have tried to uh, put in the uh, book. In chapter 8, you find a whole list in which we have described fully what we think should be the policy considerations uh, for government officials and policy makers. I think this is an, a book that came at the right time, that we are going to take it and educate these SMEs in order to grow their businesses.